etc. But the Ansar themselves were two tribes, the Khazraj and the Aus. And historically, before Islam, they were at war continuously between them. So Rasulullah had to put peace between them. So this is the group of the Ansar. Of course, there is the other group that came with the Prophet that fled Mecca. And these are called the Muhajirun, the migrants. The migrants have left all what they had in Mecca. They've left their wealth, their homes, their cattle, their families, children, everything. Some of them, they were not allowed to bring even their children with them. And so when this flux of new migrants came to Medina, and Medina was already poor, there was a major strain on the economy of Medina. Medina was, was put to the test on how to handle this new flux of people because of the very scarce resources. And so Rasulullah has to manage, had to manage this issue of how to bring brotherhood between them and make them to live in peace, sharing whatever was there. So that was not easy. The third group of Medina, uh, I'm, yeah, the third group in Medina, the second group of one is the non-Muslims of Medina. Not everyone accepted Islam. So there were still mushrikeen in Medina. Uh, these mushrikeen really in Medina, at m in large portion, they had no enmity toward Rasulullah They had no enmity toward the Muslims. And in fact, history reports that they had doubts about the deen that they were following. And so it didn't take too long for them to accept Islam. So this is the second component. So we said the first component are the Muslims, which were two groups, Ansar and Muhajireen. The second were the Mushrikeen of Medina. And the third group, which was extremely powerful, it's referred to in Islam as the Jewish tribes. These Jewish tribes had migrated a long time ago from Palestine and settled in Medina. They were wealthy, powerful, etc. And these were of a significant threat to the new Muslim community because they saw in Islam as a rising power that would eventually put their or jeopardize their power. And so they had, they were from day one very, very uh, uh, difficult in, in their stand toward the Muslims. However, Rasulullah was extremely uh, skillful. He put two charters in place in Medina. The first charter was uh, between the Muslims, really to codify the relationships between Muslims and also non-Muslims. But he had also put a charter uh, of non-aggression, specifically with the Jews, with the Jewish tribes of Medina. So there were two charters. There was the Charter of Medina. In history, it's also referred to as the Constitution of Medina, which laid down all the rights of the citizens and the relationships with non-Muslims. In addition to that, he had a specific treaty with the Jews. He knew the threat. So he wanted to silence them and bring them into a peaceful coexistence with Muslims through a non-aggression treaty. And he had put that non-aggression treaty in place. Of course, we will know later in history that non-aggression treaty was broken by these tribes and it did not really last for too long. So, Quraysh did not, I'm moving to defending the new community, uh, Conflicts started very quickly after the Hijrah uh, because the Qurayshis could not swallow the fact that here is Muhammad, والسلام, he had escaped from our hands, he has been accepted by a new community, he is building a new community that eventually will threaten the dominance of Quraysh. And so, out of their jealousy and out of their anger, at the rising power of the Muslims, they, uh, they did not want to leave them alone. Number one, they were persecuting the Muslims that were kept under their uh, captivity in Mecca, 
as I said, they did not allow everyone to migrate, so they gave hard time to those who were in Mecca. But at the same time, they were plotting how to eradicate the new entity that is taking roots in Medina. And to do that, they initiated the clandestine activity, reaching out to the non-Muslims in Medina. And uh, the first one was this uh, Ubay ibn Abi Salul, who showed the face of a Muslim, but in fact he was a mushrik. And so he was plotting against Muhammad sallam. He was the chief of the polytheists in Medina, of the mushrikeen in Medina. Uh, Quraysh sent him a warning, saying you either fight and expel Muhammad out of Medina, or we shall come with an army to exterminate you and your people. This was a threat from Quraysh to Ubay ibn Abi Salul and the Mushrikeen of Medina. And so Ubay ibn Abi Salul did not find any other option but to I'll make an alliance with Quraysh and cooperate with them to fight Rasulullah and his followers. So uh, Muslims, of course, were in precarious condition. They were not they were new. This is the second year of Hijra. Imagine, second year of Hijra. What power could they have? Nothing. And their numbers, as I said, is few hundreds at most. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to counter these plans, and this is the first permission that was given in Islam to defend themselves for the Muslims. Allah Azza wa revealed this ayah in the Quran, uh, permission to fight is given to those believers because they have been wronged and surely Allah is able to give them victory. Udhina lilladhina yuqatalun. Udhina means permission has been given. To whom? Lilladhina yuqatalun. To those who are being fought. That is the Muslims. The Muslims are being fought. Therefore permission has been given to them to defend themselves. Udhina lilladhina yuqatalun bi annahum zulimu that they have been treated unjustly and therefore permission has been given to them to defend themselves and fight back. This is the first verse giving a green light for the Muslims to bear arms in defense against Quraysh. And so uh, the news came to the Prophet Wasallam that Quraysh had indeed made that alliance and was traveling uh, before that uh, of course, we know that the Muslims left great wealth amongst the most prominent and wealthy of the companions left great wealth in Mecca. They were deprived of their wealth, of their belonging, and they just fled with, with, with their skin. So news came to the Prophet ﷺ that Abu Sufyan, the leader of Quraysh, was traveling in a caravan from Syria, going back to Mecca, and he was to, uh, in a point very close to Medina. And so they thought the Muslims that this is a chance to recover some of their wealth. So Rasulullah sent a contingent of Sahaba to intercept this caravan. It didn't work, but what it did is that Quraysh now has learned about this. And they have found out that really a great threat now has become of these Muslims who are going to threaten their commercial routes. The commercial routes that take them from Mecca to Syria to make that, those journeys of commerce. So the Muslims now are being seen as threat to their commercial uh, routes. And so they said we are going to act before this becomes uh, a reality. And so they sent uh, Quraysh prepared an army of 1,300 fighters, uh, and they were, of course, wealthy. They assembled 100 horsemen, 600 camels, and so forth. This was a major force compared to what the Muslims had. And so on the battlefield, they met at this place called Badr, and Rasulullah seeing the imbalance in power, 1,300 against 300 men or so, you know, it's, it's three times. And the, the power was completely imbalanced. So Rasulullah 